giving students the opportunity to share their work is just as important as the work itself. Sharing is an important piece of any writing process. When a writer knows they're going to share their writing with an audience, then they know that there's a reason to make sure that their writing is communicating well. They have a reason to revise and work toward the end. And so sharing is that important goal that we give our students so that they know that there's a reason to make their work their very best. So it really depends on how long that you have on that final day. If you have a very short amount of time, say you only have an hour and you have 12 students who are reading work, you probably want to spend most of the hour for the actual presentation. So when the kids come in the door, you'll want to gather them together, focus them, maybe talk about what order you're going to go in, and then get the right reading started as soon as possible. I usually ask the kids to read maybe three or four minutes of their story because I don't want the, the audience to need to sustain their listening for too long so that they lose focus. What we'll do if we have a smaller amount of kids and we have a longer amount of time is we'll spread the stories out around the room and people can walk around and look at each story after they've heard a little bit of each one. And then they can peruse on their own and actually read for themselves, write some compliments and comments for the writers. If you have a longer day, you may decide that you want to do some activities to help the kids project their voices, get ready for that performance, or even just to manage some of that wild energy that we get when we're nervous about performing. So what I love to do on the day before or maybe two days before the performance day is to bring in a stack of books and to show students a variety of covers. And what we start to notice on these covers is that the cover image, whatever's there, really tries to encapsulate what the book is about. And often through the whole process of drafting the book, we haven't talked about theme because the kids are really just not ready to think about the theme of their story. But as we're working on that cover, we're able to pull the theme and sort of the central idea of the story out. And sometimes that even leads to some minor revisions through the story as they start to see that this is a central idea, this is a central image, and then seeing their whole work come together as a complete piece. Over time, we've found that writerly play performances each have their own flavor and flair, and every group of students is unique. So if you have a group of students who's particularly quiet, it's going to be difficult for them to read their stories and be entertaining and animated, then one really great idea is to have them break into teams where they actually choose three or four important moments in their story where they have actors creating a tableau of that moment. What it does is it infuses that moment with energy and the reading itself with energy. And so even if the student is reading quietly, there's that sudden burst of energy a few times through the reading that helps the audience, it helps the reader, it helps everybody in the room get excited again and re-engage with the story. Sometimes what we'll do for a final day is we will have the whole group play a few games together to kind of warm everyone up. And that can also be a great way to get reluctant readers to be excited about reading for the group or at least to have better energy for reading for the group. And if you have a class who you feel is just not going to be able to read successfully, another option is to completely make it a gallery walk where the students put their stories around the room, maybe they stand by their own writing and they um, talk to the different readers about their work, answer questions about their work, and then that is another way to showcase what they've done. A final way you might want to work with the kids is to have them come up and be a panel and interview them about the process. That can be really enlightening for families so they understand that maybe the two pages of writing that the student has ended up with is not the sum total of their learning and the growth that they've had in the class. You can talk about what's happened during the games, through the workbook, and that really helps parents and everyone else who's in the room see what the kids have actually accomplished. So the very first time that you have a final showcase, you'll probably feel a little bit nervous. And that's a very natural way to feel. You'll think the parents are going to come in and judge how the kids have um, grown in your, under your care. And that can be a nerve wracking experience. The thing to keep in mind is that it's also a nerve wracking experience for the kids. And so really being confident in the process that you've gone through so far, keep in mind for yourself all the little wins along the way and everything the students have learned and feel uh, empowered to talk to the parents about that part of what's happened, even to say the things that the kids may not be able to put into words for themselves yet. 
as you sort of highlight those moments for the, the class, you help yourself really tell the story of what's happened in your classroom. And you also um, are able to raise your own confidence and your excitement level about the day so that when the kids need you to be encouraging and positive and um, really on their team when they're having those nervous moments, that you really have that confidence to do it. Your final day is a day to celebrate your students' successes. Go have fun.